couple of announcements. Dwight Smith Jr. is here. He will be participating. We're going to slow play him as we go along. So he did some, uh, he actually did some tracking late this, or this afternoon, just a little bit ago off some pitchers. And then we will be working him into our workouts um, going forward. Uh, Dylan Tate, much better today. Going to start playing catch in a, in a day or two. And uh, game one yesterday was won by the white team, uh, nine to four. So nine to four. Yep. So that's all I got. All right, Rock, you can start off the questions. Go ahead. Uh, Brandon, what did you think of the atmosphere last night? Well, I, I asked you guys to do a poll, the ones that were here. What did you think, Rock? Uh, you know, I, I, it wasn't as, as – I honestly thought it might be a little goofy, like, you know, bad laugh tracks and old sitcoms, but it actually was nice. It, pro it provided some atmosphere, and it was good, like, background noise, so it wasn't like being in the backfield with Ed Smith. So I think, I, I think we all agreed that it, was, it added something. So the consensus in the press box was uh, thumbs up? Yeah. Yeah, I think down on the field, same. Um, talking with some guys today a little bit about it, it, it was – just something about a little bit of a buzz in the crowd. I think that that's helpful. It wasn't such a stale feeling. Adding, uh, you know, we had walk-up music for guys also, and and uh, I thought it created a good atmosphere. As good as it could possibly be. Dan Conley, you're up next. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Dan. Hey, um, you know, we asked you this last week, but the the breakdown of the 30 man. Do you have a better sense now on number of pitchers? Are you thinking 16, 17, 15? Do you have a sense yet on what it might be? I think somewhere in the 15 to 16 range is pretty realistic. Next up, Rich Dubroff. Go ahead, Rich. Hey, uh, Brandon. You know, you're a pretty uh, social guy. You like to go out and play golf. You know, to dinner, you like to uh, play golf. You like to chat how different and how difficult has this you know time here been for you and also you know you like to bring your son to the field and spend time with him there and obviously he's not allowed to do that how difficult have all those things been for you it's been it's been tough family wise I haven't seen my family since I've been here um I don't know when I will to be honest with you um my son is in little league right now and so they crammed about 50 games into about 50 days in Chicago. So he's got a game almost every night, and I don't want to pull him away from that just because it's a season so short, and that's what he loves to do. Um, and, yeah, so I think that we're all going to be living with that adjustment of being away from home. For a lot of us, um, we're already away from home. But then to it's going to be a lot harder, harder to have our families travel in to see us travel in on the road to see us. Um, it's just going to be very, very difficult this year. So uh, fortunately, we got to spend an extra couple months of really quality family time. And it was nice to, to be home and, and to be around the kids and, and my wife and the, and the family um, for that time. But right now, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's just a lot different, for sure. And uh, I think I know a lot of our guys are feeling the same way. John Mealy, you're up next. Go ahead, John. How's it going, Brandon? John. Just to, I guess, dovetail off that, I wasn't going to go in this direction, but this is two weeks in now, and you're getting both the players who, who weren't participating at the beginning back. Do you take any solace in all these personal sacrifices that people have to make that it seems like this is working pretty well in, in your camp and your guys are really embracing the challenges that they have to do there? I think it really starts with our ownership and the senior leadership team and putting everything in place um, and really making our health a priority. And I feel like Brian Ebel and his staff, which I've mentioned before, have just been amazing um, working with our senior leadership team, ownership, and to really keeping our players, coaches, everybody here down on the on the ground floor um, safe and that we noticed initially when we first got here all the time and effort that was put in to that and how um, 
they really there was a, it was really thoughtful of how um, they are treating us and with our with our safety and our health first and foremost. So our guys are, are really appreciative of that. Um, it's been a I, I think we were just you know we haven't had hardly any complaints, if any, um, on how we're going about things. I think it's run ridiculously smooth, <laughs> and because of with all the with all the things that we're doing every day that they're so much different, it, it's as smooth as it could possibly be. And that really starts with the leadership of this organization and what they have uh, put in place for us. And, and our players have bought into that and followed suit. Mel Anthony, you're up next. Go ahead, Mel. Brandon, in a 60 game schedule, are you gonna manage any different than you would in a 162 game schedule? What might be the biggest difference, if there is any? I think just the urgency on a nightly basis is different. Um, the urgency to win on a nightly basis with the shortened schedule. Um, you might be more aggressive in pitching moves or, um, I, I mean, I wanna keep our guys healthy, so I don't wanna say that I'm gonna push guys to play more than um, they're capable of, but I can see teams doing that where, um, you know, bullpens that are built up or a little bit more aggressive, guys maybe going um, back to back days more often um, that are ready for it just because it's a go for it attitude. In a normal season, August, September, the games are definitely di different in a pennant race. And more is riding on every single night, on uh, every game, every night. Um, and so we're jumping into that from the first game of the season. So I think you could see just, I think guys are going to play with a little bit more urgency. Steve Molesky, you're up next. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Brandon. We've seen a lot of Austin Hayes leading off in the entry squads. Uh, is that where you expect he'll be when the season starts? And such a special September for him. How is he playing in camp compared to what he showed then? Well, I definitely feel like he's going to be hitting somewhere in the top of the order. I want him to get a lot of at-bats. Um, I love the at-bats that he takes. He has picked up where he's left off in September right now, and the, the bats um, so far in summer camp have been really impressive. Drives the ball to all fields, um, exciting. You've seen a couple of drag bunts if you've been here the last couple of days on his own for hits um, to either start rallies or, or to continue them. Uh, so I just like his overall game, and I think he, he's going to be a really exciting player and, and really excited about the future for him. Um, so I like, I'm going to get him as many bats as possible. John Mioli, you're up. Go ahead, John. Brent, on Dwight, you've seen a little bit in how the beginning of this progression of getting back to baseball has been with Santander. How much of a difference will, will the couple day delay, even from when Anthony came back, make for Dwight? And I guess to combine with that, have you seen enough from – Anthony Santander to put him in a spot to still be in contention for next Friday? Um, I think that sorry. Anthony's – what's up? Sorry, that was like five questions in one. I'm just going to pretend like I knew what you were asking, and I'm just going to answer it somehow. Um, I think that Anthony looks great. He just took a bunch of it live at bats. He was hitting line drives all over the park with some homers. Um, I think that he is, I think that he's got a real chance of, of breaking with the club. If, if everything goes, um, you know, stays on course right now with, without any hookups, I think that there's a, there's a possibility. I think Dwight, we have to, this is his first day. I mean, I've seen him track pitches. I haven't even seen him run yet. So I don't even have any idea from, from Smitty's, uh, if Smitty's going to be ready or not. So I don't want to commit to that. But I, I think Tony is, is trending in the right direction. Dan Conley, you're up. Go ahead, Dan. Did that answer that question? Yeah. Because John had eight questions, he stole mine. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to – what about Dylan Tate? Um, do you feel like he's got a chance to make, that fr you know, to make it Friday? Or is he kind of set back to the point where he's going to have to take some time? I think this time he's he's going to start playing catch in a couple of days. So now we're looking at uh, we're looking at not you know playing catch until the weekend. 
with us breaking next Friday, I think it's going to be a, a challenge for him to, to be a opening day. But I love that guy's makeup, and nothing that he does ever surprises me. Jeff Arnold, you're up. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Brandon. Um, can you talk a little bit about Cole Solcer and just what you've seen out of him and, and maybe what kind of role um, that you could see him playing for your team in uh, 2020? Well, uh, he, came in, he came in that game last night, first and second, nobody out, and punches out three um, to get out of an inning and then had, goes out for a second inning and puts up a, a scoreless inning the next inning also. And, you know, that's what we're looking for guys to do is to come in and, you know, fill up the strike zone. And uh, we didn't do a good job of that last night. That's a major point of emphasis, something that we really, really struggled with last year. I'm, I want to believe we're going to be better at it this year. But Cole Solcer doing that last night, it was great for people to see what that looks like. Um, from our end, and uh, I, I like his pitch mix. Uh, he's got a nice elevated fastball that he pitches at the belt with with a nice slider split combo so he can get righties and lefties out. But the main thing, like for all of our guys that have the 94 to 98 mile hour fastballs out of the pen, uh, is command. And we were behind in the count all year last year, walked you know too many hitters, um, and fell behind in hitters counts. And for us to have success this year, we're just gonna have to do a lot better job of being able and getting strike one and getting an advantage counts with the stuff that we have out of our bullpen. Joe Treza, you're up next. Go ahead, Joe. Brandon, with, with the new extra inning rule this year with the runner on second, do you have an idea of, of which guys might profile well for that role? Will, will you have certain guys that you wanna use as special pinch runners or keep on the bench? late in games in, in, in case the game goes extras and you can, you can put them on second? I think that's something that you definitely, definitely going to, I'm thinking about um, as the game goes along in a tie game as a, you know, in an eighth inning tie game situation, it's definitely in the back. I mean, you're going to try to win the game obviously in regulation, but there is, I think there is going to be some thought to if this game stays tied, um, I still got this wild card on the bench that I could, that I can pinch run. Um, you know, second base. Um, I think that 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 is something that's going to be thought about for sure. 